So in today's video, we are going to talk about Kirchhoff's laws. These laws form the basis for all network analysis. They are called the Kirchhoff's current law and the Kirchhoff's voltage law. So now let's talk about Kirchhoff's current law. Now the law states that the algebraic sum of current arriving at a junction is equal to the algebraic sum of current leaving that junction. Or better still, the algebraic sum of current arriving at a junction at any instance is equal to zero. So now let's try some examples. So now we have two examples. We have example one and example two. Now let's start off with example one. In example one, we have four currents either entering or leaving the junction. We have two amperes entering the junction. We have seven amperes also entering the junction. We have five amperes leaving the junction. And then we also have I entering the junction. Now, according to Kirchhoff's current law, the sum of current entering the junction should be equal to the sum of current leaving the junction. So now let's write down the sum of current entering the junction. So it's going to be I plus 2 plus 7 equals 5, which is leaving the junction. Now, because you want to find the value of I, let's simplify. Now, we are going to have I plus 2 plus 7 is 9. So 9 equals 5. Now, to find the value of I, we need to transpose 9 to the right-hand side. So it's going to be i equals 5 minus 9 and then i is equal to negative 4 amperes now the negative we see here simply means that i is leaving the junction instead of entering the junction so now let's move ahead and solve example 2 now for example 2 we have 2 amperes entering the junction we have 3 amperes leaving the junction we have 6 amperes leaving the junction, 18 amperes entering the junction, we have 5 leaving and x also leaving. So now let's write down the sum of current entering the junction. So for the sum of current entering the junction, we have 2 amperes plus we have 18 and that's going to be equal to the sum of current leaving the junction. So we have x leaving the junction. We have 5 also leaving the junction. We have 6 leaving the junction. And then we have 3 also leaving the junction. So now let's simplify further. So 2 plus 18 is 20. And then 5 plus 6 is 11. And 11 plus 3 is 14. So we have x plus 14. So to find the value of x, we are going to transpose 14 to the left hand side. So we are going to have 20 minus 14 equals x and 20 minus 14 is equal to 6. So we have 6 amperes leaving the junction. So that's very simple. If you are able to clearly identify those currents leaving and entering the junction, then you have no issue. So now let's move ahead and talk about KVL, that is Kirchhoff's voltage law. Now Kirchhoff's voltage law states that in a closed loop, the algebraic sum of voltage sources should be equal to the algebraic sum of voltage drops. So now let's solve an example. In this example, we have a 24 volt battery driving current that is 2 amperes through the entire circuit. And then we also have three resistors, which are the two ohms resistor. We have the four ohms resistor and then the six ohms resistor all connected in series. Notice that current will always move from a higher potential to a lower potential. Now, whenever current moves from a higher potential to a lower potential, it results in a voltage drop. So what it basically means is that as current flows through the 2 ohms resistor, there is a voltage drop V1 across the 2 ohms resistor. Now as current flows through the 4 ohms resistor, there is also a voltage drop across the 4 ohms resistor called V2. 
and as current moves through the 6 ohms resistor, there is a voltage drop V3 across the 6 ohms resistor. Now using Ohm's law, we can find the voltage drop across each of the three resistors. Now we know that from Ohm's law, V is equal to IR. So now, to find the voltage V1 across the 2 ohms resistor, is going to be I, which is the total current driven by the battery, that is 2 amperes, multiplying the resistor, which is 2 ohms. So we have 2 times 2. And that's going to give us 4 volts. So V1 is 4 volts, which means that when the current I flows through the 2 ohms resistor, there is a voltage drop 4 volts across the 2 ohms resistor. Now let's find V2 and V3. So for V2, we have 2 amperes, that is the current, multiplying 4 ohms, which is giving us 8 volts. And then for V3, we have 2 times 6, which is 12 volts. So these are the voltage drop across each of the resistors in the circuit. Now what we are going to do next is to verify if the algebraic sum of voltages dropped across each of the resistors is equal to the algebraic sum of source voltage, which is 24 volts. So according to KVL, V1 plus V2 plus V3 should be equal to 24 volts, which is the source voltage. Now V1 is 4 volts, so we have 4 plus V2 is 8 volts and then V3 is 12 volts. Now 4 plus 8 is 12 and 12 plus 12 is 24. So we have 24 equals 24. Which means that in the closed loop, the algebraic sum of voltage sources is equal to the algebraic sum of voltages dropped across the passive elements. So now let's solve a more complex example. This time we are going to combine both KVL and KCL. So in this example, we have two voltage sources. We have the 32 voltage source and then we also have the 20 voltage source. And then we have three resistors which are the 2 ohms resistor, we have the 4 ohms resistor and the 8 ohms resistor connected in the circuit. And then we are going to find the current in all parts of the circuit. Now the first thing to do is to assign current. So first of all, we are going to assign current I moving in this direction, approaching the junction. And then we are going to assign I1 in that direction, leaving the junction. And then if I is entering the junction, and I1 is leaving the junction, then it means that I minus I1 is leaving the junction flowing through this path. I know that this can be confusing. However, if you assign current this way, it will help reduce the number of equations that you get. So if I is entering the junction and I1 is leaving the junction, then I minus I1 will flow through this direction. Now, Using KCL, if you are to add I minus I1 and I1, you realize that negative I1 cancels I1 and then you have I, which is the total current approaching this junction. So this is a more convenient way of assigning currents in the network. Now after assigning currents, we are going to consider one loop at a time. So we are going to take this loop. Now we all know that according to KVL, the algebraic sum of voltage source should be equal to the algebraic sum of voltage drops. So in that case, we have 32, which is the source voltage, equals, we have I flowing through the 2 ohm resistor. So we are going to have 2I, and then plus, because I minus I1 is flowing in the direction that we took, then we are going to have plus, 8 into bracket i minus i1 
Now let's simplify. So we are going to have 32 equals 2i plus 8 by i is 8i minus 8 times i1 is negative 8i1. Now we have 32 equals 2 plus 8 is 10. So we have 10i minus 8i1. Now let's call this equation 1. Now let's take the second loop. For the second loop, let's go this direction. So we are going to have the 20 volt to be equal to. Now realize that I1 is flowing to oppose the direction that we took. We took this direction and then I1 is flowing towards that direction. So instead of being plus 4I1, it's going to be negative 4I1. And then I minus I1 is in line or in direction with the direction that we took. So that's going to be plus 8 into bracket I minus I1. So we have 20 equals negative 4 I1 plus 8 times I is 8I. And then 8 times negative I1 is negative 8I1. So now let's simplify further. So we are going to have 20 equals we have 8i and then negative 4 minus 8 is negative 12 i1. Now let's call this equation 2. Now from equation 2, we can make i the subject. So to make i the subject, we are going to transpose negative 12 i1 to the left hand side. So we are going to have 20 plus 12 i i1 equals 8i. Now let's divide both sides of the equation by 8. So when we do that, we are going to have i to be equal to 20 plus 12i1 divided by 8. Now 20 divided by 8 is 2.5. And then 12 divided by 8 is 1.5. So we have 1.5i. Now let's call this equation 3. Now we are going to substitute equation 3 into equation 1. Now equation 1 is 32 equals 10i minus 8i1. So we are going to put i, which is 2.5 plus 1.5i1 into this equation. So it's going to be 32 equals, we have 10 into brackets. Now i is 2.5 plus 1.5 i1. So we have 2.5 plus 1.5 i1 and then minus 8 i1. So now let's expand. Now 10 times 2.5 is 25. And then 10 times 1.5 i1 is 15i1 minus 8i1. Now we have 32 equals 25 plus 15 minus 8 is 7. So you have 7i1. Now we are going to transpose 25 to the left hand side. So we are going to have 32 minus 25 equals 7i1. Now 32 minus 25 is 7. So we have 7 equals 7i1. And then when we divide both sides of the equation by 7, we have i1 equals 1 ampere. So i1 is equal to 1 ampere. Now from equation 3, which is i equals 2.5 plus 1.5i, we have i to be equal to 2.5 plus 1.5 i1 and i1 is 1 so 2.5 plus 1.5 into brackets 1 is equal to 4 amperes so i is equal to 4 amperes and then i minus i1 is equal to we have 4 minus 1 which is equal to 3 amperes so in all 
the current I flowing through this direction is 4 amperes approaching this junction and then we have I1 which is 1 ampere leaving the junction and then we have I minus I1 which is 4 minus 1 leaving the junction through this path so that is equal to 3 amperes so these are the currents flowing through all the parts of the circuit so that's it for today's video if you like the content of this video feel free to like comment and share among friends don't forget to subscribe to receive more interesting videos hope to see you in my next video bye bye